And hello everybody, Peter here once again with another episode of Peter's Content Free Podcast. Episode 9, I believe, uh, Season 1, Volume 1, Series 1 still. We're just, uh, we're just stick, barely, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We're just barely getting started here. There's miles, eons, just years and light years of content still here to come. Look, I've got, I've got, I'm on my second cup of coffee right here. Let me take a sip. And I've got a few things to say to you. Hope you're all having a good day. Um, I'd like to start out with a, well, I'd like to start out with an open letter to the management of my apartment complex. Uh, the, the main topic of it is about parking. All right, so, uh, dear management, uh, you guys, uh, let me start over. Dear management, uh, what the heck? You guys need to figure out this parking situation. What's so hard about giving each apartment at least one, uh, you know, dedicated, reserved, assigned parking spot. I've lived in apartment complexes, or maybe those were condos. Am I expecting too much here? <sighs> I just hate coming home late at night and not having a place to park and having to park in a totally different parking lot, uh, you know, in a totally different part of the apartment complex and having to walk upwards of, I don't know, 300 feet. That's a little excessive. If I wanted to be walking, I wouldn't have driven my car in the first place. Right? And it, the only problematic times are late at night. Let's see. You know, when everyone is at home, asleep, uh, like after 10 o'clock, probably, and before 5 o'clock. At, at around 5 o'clock, people start waking up, start stretching, you know, rubbing this sleep out of their groggy little eyes and all the little little sand that the sandman came and left in their eyes overnight mm, little, little sleep nuggets and uh, and they start getting in their little cars and they start going to work but between those magical hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, that parking lot is packed to capacity and I, I, I just want to, I just want to be able to park near my, near my apartment. It's that so difficult. You guys, did you guys not plan this out right? Uh, I think there's something in the, you know, like the lease that says, you know, like each apartment can have, you know, like two, two cars, you know, per apartment or something. I only have one, right? Uh, and then I've seen, I mean, you, people can get guest passes, you know, to have like extra cars. Maybe there's like a lot of people getting guest passes. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, I don't think it's like a, like a huge problem of people like parking like illegally. They don't have passes and stuff. Cause I've seen like the towing c company come around and like flashing flashlights and in windshields, uh, you know, checking for passes. I've even watched them check my car before and it was a little bit, I was like, yep, I got my pass. Check it, bro. Check it. I'm good to go. It feels good to pass a little test like that, you know, when you've... That's like passing a test I know I've studied enough for that and I didn't have to study it all for it. Answer one question, get a 100, get an A+. Plus. It feels good. But... I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I just... This is the worst part. Sometimes I get a little bit hungry late at night. Say, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I have a nice spot right in front of my apartment that I secured earlier in the day when everyone was gone to work, right? Uh, so I slink out to my car, then I just drive down the road, I go to McDonald's, I get myself a little hamburger, then I drive right on back, and I'm gone for like five minutes total. And when I get back, my spot has been taken. Because it's, it was, as soon as I left, it was suddenly the only open spot in the whole parking lot. And I guess there's like some sort of force of nature, you know, like... 
it's there were just cars suddenly attracted to that spot and it's and so I then I had to dress you know I have to start cruising around at three o'clock at night the other parking lots in the apartment complex looking for spots to park in and it's just uh it's a huge inconvenience for me like a huge mild inconvenience it's a, enough of a huge, mild inconvenience that I wanted to pen this open letter in my podcast to you. Okay. And then there's also these other parking spots that are like, it says reserved for future residents because they're kind of near to the, like the, like the office, the apartment, you know, like the office where like the people are, that the people come and talk to, you know, like, hey, I'd like to get an apartment, com- you know, apartment at this crappy apartment complex. And like, and it, this says on those, it says no parking between hours of seven and seven. I'm like, these people are just getting teased. Like you can park here now, but no, you're going to want to park there later, but you won't get to park there later. So enjoy it while you can. I really think that some people have different types of spit in their mouths because I've been really impressed by the way some people can spit and uh, the globules that come flying out and arcing gloriously through the air, uh, just the way it like sticks together in the air and you know splats onto the ground or, or whatever they're spitting on uh, for whatever reason. But then usually uh, I try it and it's just more of a... Mm, more of a disappointing, uh, like shotgun effect. Like more, some sometimes more of a mist. Sometimes more of a like a grape shot, or a like what are those, like things they would shoot out of cannons with two cannonballs, with a chain in between the two cannonballs. They shoot those at the other ship's mast to try to take down the mast. I get that effect sometimes. Uh, I don't know if it's like a like it varies from person to person, like what kind of spit they have, or it um, depends more on what uh, hey, like what they've been eating, or how maybe how you hold your lips and your tongue. Um, it could be all sorts of things like that, but whatever it is, most of the time, I just don't got it. And I mean, I've spent long hours practicing spitting, mostly. Uh, while standing, waiting at the bus stop, waiting for my school bus to pick me up early, early hours in the morning, long before my, you know, long before the sun ever even came up in the morning. I could spit most of the way across the road, but still it was never anything like super impressive uh, that I ever got around to showing off or... mm. Also, I never, sometimes when people spit, I think it's because they were chewing tobacco, uh, which is a whole different disgusting story. I'm not talking about that sort of thing. That's just like a long stream of goopy nastiness. Uh, I'm not even going to go there with their, you know, like Mountain Dew bottles and stuff like that. But I'm just talking about like regular spitting. It's obviously not the nicest habit. Uh, it, it'll, you know, turn a lot of people off if you're just randomly walking along. You just spit. And it's also, I don't, you know, encourage, you know, just randomly like hawking loogies you know like making disgusting noises you know rattling up big balls of spit from the dungeony depths of your throat don't do that that sounds gross sometimes i get a little nauseous just listening to people do that but it's a lot of fun amongst you know a bunch of maybe like high school boys who see and who can you know bring up the most disgusting um wads of this that sort of stuff also, speaking of spit, the other day, actually earlier today, I had a very, just like a very bitter taste in my mouth, just out of nowhere for about three minutes. Uh, just one of the bitterest, most bitter tastes I'd ever tasted. Uh, and I hadn't taste, I hadn't put anything in my mouth recently, and then it just went away. And I, I don't know where it came from, and I don't, where it, don't know where it went. So I just want to make sure, if anyone can tell me, um, armchair doctors and all that, if uh, that maybe means if I, uh, if I have cancer, or if I'm about to have a brain aneurysm, or if any major appendages are going to fall off, like a leg or an arm. 
I, I really only want to hear about if like any worst case scenarios. I don't want to hear about. I don't want to hear about any minor stuff like, like just fingers or facial features falling off. I don't want to hear about that. I don't, that stuff I can't be bothered to hear about. But if it's anything big, let me know. If you think, if if you just think, you know, it doesn't have to be for sure. But if you just, if you think like maybe my leg's gonna fall off because I had a bitter taste. Sometimes it's just a little stuff like that. You know, one time I was watching that show House, MD, and uh, and he, he casually mentioned, like, that person's picking his nose a lot. He has a brain tumor, and it turned out the guy had a brain tumor. But that's just how that that show worked. And then I was like, wait a second. I, w- I had been, like, picking my nose when the guy said that. And then I, like, Googled it. Like, does picking your nose a lot mean you have a brain tumor? And it turned out that... There was already like an ask, like a Yahoo questions topic on some guy that had been watching House and was also worried about if picking his nose a lot meant he had a brain tumor. It was total total nonsense, of course, but you got to be sure about this sort of things. But just because that's the case, it doesn't mean that you don't have a brain tumor just because you do or don't pick your nose a lot. So I don't want to, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. By the way, I found out what my neighbors are up to sometimes. I mentioned this story earlier um, to some other people, but I'll say it again because it's worth repeating. I, for, I don't know, I think I've lived here for two years now, and, well, I've been putting up with having a very thin ceiling. I can, I can hear people just walking normally. I can hear people walking heavily. I can hear music through the ceiling. Uh, and I've never gone up to say anything because I know that if I, uh, you know, ask them to stop walking heavily, I'll still be able to hear them walking normally. So, um, like, what's the point? Plus, there's the fact that I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm not good at confrontation. But the other day, on a Wednesday, at around 8 o'clock, I, it was just the whole... The whole ceiling was, was creaking heavily, like, back and forth, squeak, squeak, squeak. Uh, like a giant rocking chair, and and then suddenly there was this music, uh, and I could hear people singing, and the music, the bass, uh, it was overpowering. I, it was my whole apartment seemed to be shaking. My my desk that my computer was on was vibrating, and I thought this is it. I have to go say something. I'm gonna go say something. So I went up there. I knocked on the door. No, first before I knocked on the door. I, I lifted up my my hand, you know, in a fist to get ready to knock on the door. And it I did about 30 seconds of that to get ready to knock on the door. And then I finally knocked on the door. Knock, 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 knock. And nothing happened. The door was practically knocking back. It was, the door was like vibrating, you know, because of their music in there. So then I tried the knocker, you know. I used the knocker to knock. Clack, 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 clack. And uh, still nothing. And I had to try knocking four different times, knocking, using the knocker, before someone opened the door. And it was this Hispanic lady. And uh, as soon as she opened the door, she was smiling, and she she beckoned me right in immediately. She opened the door with, like, an open arm, beckoning me right in, which uh, was a little bit, that you know, that, that surprised me. Uh, but as I looked into the apartment, I realized that... Uh, well, they were having a church service. They had about 30 or 40 chairs set up, and uh, there were a bunch of people in there, and they had like a screen with like with like words to a song, and they were bumping like so some like praise and worship songs, uh, like but they were like really rocking out, and that was the music I was hearing. Uh, and I, I didn't go in, obviously, but I should have, because I bet they had some awesome snacks and food there. First of all, this church, they had snacks. And second of all, it's Hispanics. And from my experience, uh, from like when I lived in Chicago, um, they always have really good food. So I should have, but I, I just tried to explain. I was, like, I was like, the music is really loud. And she was just like smiling and nodding. I was like, it's, I can hear it through the floor. The floor is really thin. She was just, I don't think, I don't know if she was understanding, comprehending what I was saying. There was a language barrier. And I was just, I was like, I was like motioning and like to my ears and to the floor. I was like, the bass is going through the floor. So I was like, 
eventually I just like nodded and said thank you and and she nodded and then I walked away and she closed the door and I went back downstairs and I don't know I could still hear the music but at least my desk wasn't shaking anymore but at least I know what to expect on Wednesday nights now I don't know but what are the chances of that and why do sometimes I have mist on both sides of my windshield while driving? Mostly early in the morning. Is it, maybe, is it just because it's so humid? I, does anyone actually know how to, like, defrost, like, the inside of a windshield? Like, how does that work? I, I get in the car, and I'm rolling early in the morning, right? The sun's just coming up. I'm just cruising. I got my windows down. I always drive my windows down. I don't even know. If my air conditioning works, I don't know if my heating works. I think my heating, my heating, I'm pretty sure it works. My air conditioning, doubt it works. I never use it, right? Uh, but roll my windows down, and I have to, it's not even raining, and I have to have my windshield wipers on because the outside of my windshield keeps, like, refogging up so quick that I have to, like, keep wiking, wi wiping this fog off my windshield. Is that normal, or is there something wrong with my windshield? Is it like some sort of humidity that it's in the air, or is it coming up off the road? I, I just don't remember it ever happening with like any happening with any other car besides this one that I've ever had before in my life. Does it happen to anyone else? And then it it also mists up on the inside, and I have to like I turn the the fan up to three, then I blast it on cold, even though I don't think it's really cold, it's just air, maybe slightly cooled. And does that work better? Like, how does that work? What's the best way to like def, def, demist, de, defog the inside of a windshield? Do you put it on cold? Do you put it on hot? Does it matter? Does one work better if like the outside is cooler or hotter? Like if it's hot outside, should you put it on cold? If it's cold outside, should you put it on hot? Should, or should you put it on like the same as it is outside? Like nobody ever explained this sort of stuff to me. Like I, is it supposed to be, is it supposed to be common sense and I'm overthinking it too much? I feel like this is the sort of thing I should have learned in school and you know, instead of like how leaf molecules work. Also, I hope I've gotten to the point in this podcast where also, I mean, I hope you're all listening to them in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I hope I've gotten to the point where you, I know I have, where you have kind of forgotten, forgotten what I talked about in the first one. Uh, because I forgot what I talked about in the first one. And so I might mention things already. I mean, again, that, that I said before. I don't know what I said yesterday, much less a week ago or a month ago or a year ago, whenever I said all the things that I said in the first podcast. Let me take another sip of coffee. This is my third or fourth. I think it's my third cup now. What kind of floss do you guys like? There's, uh, there's the kind of flosses that are kind of more like thread. They're kind of, uh, threadier, right? Actually, I think I only know of two kinds of floss. Those kinds of flosses that are kind of threadier are often flavored, right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They're kind of fluffier. And then there's another kind of floss that's more of like a flat, kind of, they're flat like tape. That's the kind of floss I like, glide. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much the kind I get anymore. The flat. I mean, the threadier floss seems to kind of, I'm, I'm like flossing and it's, it seems to kind of fray and get bunched up. Maybe it means my, I don't floss enough that it seems like the more you floss, uh, your teeth kind of, uh, you know, you can kind of develop those gaps so it gets easier to floss. Like uh, when you don't floss very much, you know, like you finally go into the dentist and they do a little bit of flossing for you, you know, the dental hygienist. Hygienist? Hygienist? I think it's hygienist. She starts getting in there, and I don't know how they can tell if you haven't been flossing very much, if it's like um, a huge buildup of plaque or, um, you know, like a huge one of your teeth falls out. But maybe it's because they can't get the floss in there very well. Uh, but I think maybe if you floss a lot, it gets it starts getting easier to get the floss in there. Somehow your teeth kind of 
accommodate it. Kind of like how, you know, wearing a retainer or, you know, braces, your teeth can move around. It's, they're all kind of fluid in there in your gums. It's kind of weird to think about, but it is a thing. Uh, first of all, there's a new thing I heard about. The last time I went in to get my, cleath, my teeth cleaned, math and dental hygiene, uh, it's like a crossover episode. There's a thing you can have build up on your teeth called calculus. That's a real thing. The lady was like, you've got some calculus on your teeth. And I was like, I, I dropped out of college for a reason. I don't want to be hearing about no more calculus. I'll, I'll try to floss and brush better because I don't want any of that anywhere near me, ma'am. But they do give you cool, they give you those cool glasses to wear. They're big enough to go over my glasses, like old people glasses, you know? Uh, they like, they're big in the front, big in the sides. Uh, because they use like weird lasers and bright lights. At least at the dentist I go to. And the dentist I go to is a little, I feel like, maybe it's just like a, a certain interior decorating style. Or maybe it really is just to cut costs. But it makes me wonder a little bit. Uh, they're a little bit shady. I feel like they're a little bit shady. I don't know if they actually are, but I feel like they could pack up and leave and be gone. Just the whole operation. I feel like if someone found out whatever dark and shady thing they're hiding, if someone found out about it, if someone did a little bit of digging, if someone found out about it, they could pack up and be gone and leave in an afternoon. Uh, just because... Like they have like the uh, like the open rafter metal ceiling and rafter look, they just like for like all the little you know like they have like the little rooms with the little lean back chairs and stuff. They just like built these little cubicles. They have full full height walls, you know, but the the ceiling is like higher than that. It's like a weird little like 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 indie startup office look with the lofted ceiling but it's a dentist's office. It's just weird being in a dentist little room without a ceiling. The ceiling is up there and then you can like, if I could jump really high, I could jump from cubicle to cubicle, but I can't jump as high as normal ceilings. I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore, but the only reason I go to that dentist is because I, I looked up, uh, I went to Google Maps and I typed in dentist and uh, that one popped up as close. There were like three or four of them that were pretty close. And this one is the one with the most reviews that was still relatively positive. I was like, yeah. It's, like this one had like 50 reviews. And the next other closest one only had like four reviews, you know, on Yelp. And I, I was like, yeah, the one with 50 reviews, probably better than the one with four reviews. But after going there three or four times, um, like maybe this place isn't actually that much better. They're just smart because they they encourage people to leave reviews, but they do it in kind of a weird way. And I don't know if this is like allowed or not. Like, are you allowed to like like give people like promotions in order to leave a review? Like, do this. Like, hey, leave a review. We're trying to reach this goal. If you leave a review, if we get to cert. Cause the, the, the dental hygienist was like, hey, hey, be sure to leave a review. She like gave me like a little card like with a little web address for where to leave a review. Give us she she's like, hey, give us five stars. Make sure you leave a review. The dentist, what's whatever his name was, he's like, she's like, hey, if we get to hundred hundred reviews, the doctor, doctor, what's his name, is gonna do a funny rap and put it on a Facebook page. I was like, okay. Of course, I didn't leave a review. I was like, you, you guys need to work on some sort of different motivation here. I don't care about your doctor doing a funny rap. I don't follow you guys on Facebook. How about you give me five bucks and I'll do a review. Give me five bucks off my next, next visit. You get a hundred reviews quick that way, but I guess that's actually against the rules. This guy could do a hundred funny raps and I wouldn't give a crap, but five bucks would go a long way towards getting me to do a review. You know what I'm saying? That probably, there probably is some sort of like, that probably would turn into a scandal really quick, given, given vouchers for reviews. 
I just don't know. Anyways, the, like you guys know, I did go in for my uh, first round of fillings not too long ago. I made like a video on YouTube about it that long that time. I went back in for my second round of fillings not too long after. Those were like worse at first, but then like not, they didn't seem quite as bad after. My teeth felt weird for a long time just having like new stuff in your teeth, but everything feels pretty normal now. And, uh, and apparently they have this automated system, you know, where they text you like little reminders. Uh, and you can, <laughs> I'm used to those just being like little things where you can like text, like it says like, text text yes to confirm your appointment <laughs> and sometimes i i just text like no and one time i texted a thing like can i listen to music or something and the next time i went in the girl was like oh by the way you can listen to music i was like i i, I, I just like jokingly texted it back because i thought it was just like an automated program but she was like oh by the way you can listen to music i was like how did you know I wanted to listen to music? She's like, I saw it on the text you sent. Apparently they read all the text you send to those things, that, but they just can't like respond. It's like a one way, it's like a, like a one way radio, except for, except for the automated text they send out. I, I don't know, I, but thankfully I hadn't sent anything off. Sometimes those things I'll send you automated texts when you really don't want them. And I like rant and rave at them trying to get me to send, send, Stop sending me texts. I don't know. Because I, I think I'm just like, you know, letting out all my, all my feelings, you know, at a, at a harmless robot. I didn't know there could actually be humans reading them, reading all the stuff I'm saying at the other end. But now sometimes I, you know, send some little texts, you know, like just to the machine that there could be that little, uh, that, uh, because I know there could be that that receptionist reading them at the other end. Then again, how often, this is unrelated, but how often do you guys push back your cuticles? I feel like I forget to do it most of the time, and so I don't think it's really a necessary thing to do. Um, but then sometimes I get like a little hangnail. Do you guys, is it still called a hangnail when it's like, I don't know if this happens to everybody, but like a little it's just like a little sliver of skin right above your fingernails, like peels up for like no reason. Like, I don't know, maybe the skin right above your fingernails gets too tight, too taut. It uh, just peels up and it gets like, mm, it's not a fun, not a fun time. Uh, and when that happens, I think, I think if I push back my cuticles, cuticles is a weird word and it's a weird part of the body, uh, but I feel like if I push back my cuticles like I'm doing a little bit right now, it kind of relieves a little bit of that tension. I'm less likely to get a hangnail. I, I call both those things hangnails and when like a little bit of fingernail like slivers up. But that hardly ever happens to me. I keep my fingernails very well trimmed. Uh, some <laughs> I found out that some people think it's too short, but uh, I really can't have my fingernails going past the tips of my fingers. In fact, I don't really like hardly any of the white showing. Not Probably not more than a millimeter of the white of my fingernails showing. And I didn't really think anyone really knew about pushing back cuticles. In fact, I've never really heard anyone talking about it until one day I th feel like when I was in my teenage years, I heard, uh, what's his name? His name Jimmy in Ed, Ed, and Eddie ask about it. I think he was asking his sister if it was time to push back their cuticles which is a very funny thing to me. So maybe it is a thing. But I don't, I probably push back my cuticles only once a month, but it's probably healthier to do it. I feel like the fingers, uh, they look better with the cuticles unpushed back because then they look kind of squished up and gross with the cuticles pushed back. And then they look a lot smoother with the cuticles nat natural, you know? Like what do, like if you go and get like a manicure, do they do anything to your cuticles? I'm not sure. I should go get a manicure sometime just because my my hands are so often, you know, on camera. Just because, you know, it's, these are, these are, these are my money makers. This is what, uh, you know, this is what I work with. Uh, 
I don't know. Must it, plus, it might be soothing. I don't know. <laughs> Are manicures soothing? I don't think I look a little mani petty. I don't really care about my feet. Um, I could find out. How much does a manicure cost? I don't think I'd. 10, 15? Couldn't cost more than a haircut, right? I don't know. I have to look into it. Could be soothing. Also, I recently found out that I have some form of the skin condition known as. I think it's pronounced dermatographia. Derma, dermatographia. Sometimes my back gets really itchy. Sometimes my upper thighs and, well, butt cheeks. And I start itching and scratching them as best I can with my well-trimmed fingernails. And then sometimes, after scratching and itching for a long time, I look, I looked at my back in the mirror and I could see all, all of my scratch marks all flared up and bumpy and it looked horrifying. Truly horrifying, like, uh, <laughs> it looked bad. Um, and then, so I sent a picture of it to my mom, who's a nurse, and, uh, and she's like, I don't remember what she said, but she said, it looks like you might have dermatographia or something like that. Am I saying that right or am I saying that wrong? And then sure enough, I, uh, I tried running like a little, my fingernail down my arm a couple times and after a few seconds, maybe like 10 or 15, well, almost immediately there was like a little red line. And then after a few more seconds, it like raised up into like a nice, like a nice bump. It doesn't hurt or anything, but it's very, very soothing. Like I can draw on my arm almost anywhere. I can draw on my face, everything, just by dragging. I mean, I, I tried it with like a, like an awl an all a w l all is that how you say that anyways so i should probably try i mean i like drawing so i should probably try drawing on myself with this sometime i'm just you know i'm not super com confident about my body <laughs> it's art <laughs> body confidence issues no but i should probably try that sometime at least all right it, it works better on like the more sensitive parts of like the inside of my arm works better than the outside of my arm. You know, the inside has no hair, the outside has more hair. Maybe that has to do something with it. I don't know, but it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. I don't know how long I've had that and just never realized it. I don't know how long something like that can go undetected, but it went undetected for a good while. One big issue I want to talk about and address here in this podcast is uh, tractor trailers that retread their tires and then the tire treads come flying off and these huge rubber husks uh, are left lying in the middle of the highway and cars have to swerve around them dangerously or drive over them and it's damaging and dangerous and scary. Uh, and I just want to know why this is still a thing and why it's allowed. Um, basically, if you don't know, uh, why this happens. As far as I can tell, as far as my understanding of it is this, that um, usually with most cars, there's a, there's the tread of the tire and the tire wall. Uh, and with most, most cars, I guess, all of this generally uh, wears out at the same time. You know, by the time the tire tread is wearing out with general usage, maybe the tire wall is also kind of wearing out too, or at least it's, you know, maybe what, it, you know, maybe starting to dry rot or something. It's okay. It's not worth trying to rescue the tire wall, but uh, with tractor trailers, they drive so much and put so many miles on their tires that they, they, they wear out the tire tread and the tire wall the wall of the tire, the sides of it, is still in pristine condition, so they, uh, I guess they may maybe like grind it down a little bit, and then they just glue on another brand new, fresh tire tread, right? And then they just hit the road again. And then sometimes, 
Uh, I guess they didn't do it well or do it right. Sometimes uh, this tire tread comes flying off and uh, there it is in the road. Uh, it's a huge hazard to me at least. I don't know. It makes me angry like that. It, this is a thing. I feel like we've all seen these tire treads in the road. Have we not? Raise your hand if you have seen, if you have seen a tire tread in the road. Raise your hand if you have not. See? So many more hands raised for the, for option A. Look, it's, why is it like, why is it legal to do that if it's such a common occurrence for these tire treads to come flying off? I have more than once have to have, have had to drive over a tire tread in the road and have had, why can't I talk, and have had it hit the bottom of my car because there was no time for me to change lanes or no space for me to change lanes because of the cars around me on the road. And I've also seen people swerve dangerously into other lanes, uh, just like erratic driving because there was just like a huge thing there. It's like, what's the big deal here? It's not worth saving money on a new tire. I'm sure these tires are expensive, but it's not, it's like, Come on now. It makes makes me upset. Makes me scared to drive. The only thing more scary about tractor trailers and big, these big trucks is driving next to one of them on the road. There's just they're just there, big. You just know that like one tiny swerve from them, it'd be over. Or driving by driving by between two of them, it's like walls of death on either side of you. It's I, I just hit the gas, try to speed on past them. I don't care. I'm pretty sure if I, if a cop caught me going like 15, 20 over, you know, just to, and I was like, yeah, I was doing it because I was terrified of that, of that tractor trailer. I'm pretty sure that'd be a, like a pretty good explanation. And I'd get off with a warning, if not a commendation, you know, he'd be like, oh yeah, that's cool. I totally understand tractor trailers are terrifying. I think that'd be a good idea. I mean, that'd be a solid explanation. I feel like everybody. I mean, I've been... I mean, tractor trailers are com almost entirely composed, comprised, compromised, c constructed of blind spots. I've... I was dr driving past one once, and it just started merging lanes, and before I knew it, I was driving on the shoulder. And... It's times like these when I, you know, had to slow down and then pull in behind it. And it sounds like those when I was like, that's when I should have used my horn. But then it probably would have swerved. Who knows? The horn might have been even worse because, you know, if tractor trailers, they start swerving and stuff that could have jackknifed. And it's just not, look, but I never use the horn when I should use the horn. It's always an after the fact thing. I just react to the situation, hit the gas, swerve, I mean, hit the brakes, swerve, and then like 10 seconds later, I'm like, ugh, I wish I'd have honked. That would have been the perfect time to honk. Would have been such a good, justified honk. But I'm, I'm always too in the moment to honk. And then sometimes I'm like riding with people, and they're like, I don't know if their hands are like just perfectly hovering over the little honk button on the steering wheel or if that's just like a instinct that they have that I, I don't have trained I guess you don't train instincts do you but a reflex they trained that I just don't have maybe I should just go you know practice driving in the parking lot set up some cones practice honking at things you know get it into my system but I really have that that uh, like a sour aftertaste of things mostly because I didn't I didn't honk when I wanted to and then you can't honk later. You just can't. That's like getting into an argument and then being in the shower the next day and thinking of a good comeback that you should have said. And what's the deal with skin? It's like, skin is a thing that bothers me a lot. Just the concept of it. It's like, it's like this big thing covering our whole body it's a little thin uh but it's also large and uh, all encompassing but it's also got these holes in it like our mouth and our butthole and where does it really 
end in those circumstances, uh, like at our lips? Does it end right at the lip and where right at my lip? Does it, like on the inside of my cheek, is that skin also? And if it is skin on the inside of my cheek, how far down my throat does it go? And is there skin inside my stomach? Like where, what is and is not skin? It's a big, skin is a big old organ. The biggest organ, I think. And it just really bothers me. The mouth, just the concept of the mouth being like a hole in the skin bothers me. And I think that's why, I think that's why needles bother me too. Uh, the fact that you're poking a hole in the skin where there shouldn't be a hole. Like, I want it to stay complete. Like, I, I don't want you to poke extra holes. You know, like, what if you poked a hole in the skin and then it started, like, uh, unraveling or something? Like, you got, like, you know how you, with, like, pantyhose, you can get, like, runs in your, runs in it? What if you poked a hole in your skin and just started, like, a little rip? Just started going all the way up your arm or something. Makes me very uneasy. Needles do. I know it's silly. Skin seems very, it's very resilient. Uh, and it seems to take, it seems to take needles very well. You can just poke holes all day, I guess. Just thinking about it kind of makes me a little bit lightheaded. Uh, but I don't, uh, I'd rather not poke holes. Uh, skin it. Maybe that's why I don't like n fingernails either. Looking, at, thinking, mostly pictures of fingernails because that's where like they go into the skin. Is that skin under the fingernails too? And how do the fingernails go under the skin? They're kind of wedged in and over the skin with weird flaps. And there's the cuticles all over again. Maybe the cuticles are. Uh, I don't know. The, the human body is a terrifying and wonderful thing. Personally, I think my favorite time to go to grocery stores or pretty much any store in general is maybe the one, two, three, four, five o'clock time slot of 24 hour stores. There's a couple of them near me. There's a grocery store, there's a Walmart or, uh, and these stores use this uh, this shift um, to just have the store open, but there's generally more employees in the store than customers, and sometimes they're just like plain clothes employees, and they've got like I put you know like their earphones in, just listening to music, and they've just got like like pallet loads of of stuff in the aisles and just like restock in the store since there's hardly any uh, customers in there, and then there's just me. And I'm just, sometimes it, you know, it's just like a weird kind of, you know, weird kind of, well, it's a weird time of night. And I'm just wandering around the store poking stuff. I poke it and then I unpoke it. You know, I move it and then I move it back because I used to work in retail. So I, I know what it's like. Sometimes I help, you know, I bring stuff to the front of the shelf, you know, because I know what it's like. And, uh, and I don't know, it's kind of, kind of peaceful kind of eerie what's that called the um the wish the uh, something the something hour the, w the w there's some there's some word that's on the the tip of my tongue the whispering the w the willowing there's some hour someone tell me um anyways it probably has nothing to do with what i'm actually thinking of so you probably won't guess it. If I can't, I'm probably thinking of the wrong thing. Anyways, I like stores at that time of night. I like things in the off hours, the off seasons. Beaches when it's cold and windy and no one's there. Just kind of walking around. Uh, every, you know, yeah. I don't like beaches for... Yeah, I think I touched on that before anyways. Plus then there's only like one cash register open and... The, 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 ca the cashier is just like, 
kind of dazed in a daze as much as I'm in a daze for being there and everything goes smoothly. It bothers me a little bit that I have several shirts that I don't wear anymore, but I still have them for several years now. I still have them because I like them. They're, I, ha I bought them because I like them and I have them because I like them, but I guess I don't like them enough to wear them. Like I just, sometimes when I'm looking for a shirt to wear, I look at them and I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, no, I cannot wear that shirt. That shirt would look ridiculous on me. I'm not that person anymore. I'm, I'm too grown up and mature for that. Maybe that's what I think. Or that, I don't know what it is, but I'm just, I, I've moved on as a person, perhaps. I don't know, I still wear a lot of ridiculous shirts, or I don't know, but I just, it's just a personal thing. But I don't want to get rid of the shirts because I still like them, and I've gone through a lot with a lot of these shirts, and there are a lot of personal, I th I should just, and a lot of them, I don't feel like, uh, I mean, I mean, ideally, I would donate them to Goodwill or something, uh, but a lot of them I've, I've worn holes in, you know, there's holes in the, in the armpits, or at least I've learned, I, I stained a lot of the ar armpits, because I've learned that some, uh, antiperspirants give you, like, weird acidic armpits, and they stain the armpits of your shirts as well. So I try to only wear, I think I think deodorant is okay, but there's some antiperspirants. There's like a dis, there's like a difference between deodorants and antiperspirants, right? Some antiperspirants make you stain your arm, the armpits of your shirts, which is really distressing and disappointing when you look at your favorite shirt and the, the armpit of your shirt is all, all messed up even after you've put it through the washer and the dryer and the armpits are still all messed up you feel like you can't put your shirt put your arms up and everyone will look at your right at your armpits even though you're fresh out of the shower and your shirt's fresh out of the washing machine your armpits are all messed up what's with that that's not cool who who designed your antiperspirants that give you acidic armpits and then uh anyways these these shirts you know they're like I'm all nostalgic about them. I don't want to get rid of them. I've worn holes in them. But I, sh I really should just move on past them and free up some space in my little... I don't even have a dresser. I just have like little plastic bins. And I don't even put stuff in them very often. Usually I just... I do the laundry. And then I get the laundry back out of the dryer and put it back in my dirty clothes hamper. And then I have like a little pile where I pile up the dirty clothes in the floor and I eventually have to do the laundry again. So I take the dirt, the clean clothes out of the dirty clothes hamper and put them in a little pile and put the dirty clothes in the dirty clothes hamper and take them to the, the, the washing machine. So I think clean clothes actually spend more time in the dirty clothes hamper than dirty clothes at this point in my life. I've never, every now and then I get into like a little, like a little fit of cleanliness where I, you know, fold some stuff up and put it in my little plastic drawers. I have like little plastic drawers from Target or something that I use as a, like a dresser. A, um, oh, what's a fa fancy, you guys know what I mean by dresser? Uh, that I use for a dresser sometimes, but most of the time, nah. But all those shirts that I don't wear very often, those are in the dresser. Because I hadn't, I folded them up once and put them in there and never really pulled them out again. So those are all nice and preserved in their current state forever and ever. But these other shirts, they're, you know, I'm putting them through the ringer. Hopefully not staying in the armpits too much because I just only wear deodorant. Uh, lately I've noticed that the water coming out of my faucet, the cold water, um, I don't know if I've told you guys that there's lately been a scandal in my town uh, about there being cancer in my water from some, there's, there's like some, uh, f like facility, quote unquote, like a, you know, a facility, a factory of some sort farther up the river, uh, that my town is built on something like a paint factory or something, dumping some chemical or something in the water called Gen X, very mysterious sounding. Anyways, so there, apparently 
and it's some crazy chemical that the water treatment plant can't even filter out. I think I mentioned this. Anyways, besides there being water, I mean, cancer in my water, water in my cancer, um, I, I'm still drinking the, the, the tap water because I've been drinking it for two years, and there's people in town that have been drinking it for 20 years, regardless. I've also noticed that my tap water, does, it used to, I feel like it used to come out when I turned the cold, there's a hot knob and a cold knob, and I feel like when I used to turn the cold knob, it used to come out kind of cool, kind of cold, and I feel like now it just comes out kind of room temperature. Is this just a, like a byproduct of it being summer and the sun beating down on the ground and heating up the pipes a little bit? And is, did this happen last summer too and I just didn't think about it? And will it be cooler again when winter rolls around, do you think? Like, how do these pipes work? Or is it, or did something really change, you think? Like, what's going on here? I mean, I don't really like really cold water. Like, I don't like ice water. If I like it maybe just slightly like a skosh cooler. Just like a half skosh cooler. Like one and a half degrees cooler than room temperature. I mean, I guess after it... I, I, mean, I just have like a water bottle I fill up from the, from the faucet. And it... And it it just sits here next to my computer and I drink from it and go fill it up and drink from it and go fill it up. I mean, it end, I dr end up drinking from it and it ends up being room temperature anyways, but after I fill it up from the faucet and drink from it, I, ex I kind of expect that first sip, that first sup to be, well, cooler and slightly more refreshing, right? Slightly, it also usually tastes a little weirder because it's like, I don't know, it tastes weirder just because it, seems like it's like crisply from the faucet but it's also cooler but lately it has seemed to be almost warmer and then it cools down to room temperature or something i don't know it's weird i'm and i'm still i've been kind of musing over it trying to figure out if it's really all in my head or if it's really different or not maybe i'm just over analyzing it I don't know, water's a, it's a weird thing, but uh, we gotta keep drinking it. You gotta. You can't, I don't really wanna be, you know, there's a lot of things that, that taste good that have water in them. Uh, you know, like soda, coffee, sweet tea, uh, almost everything else in the world uh, that's drinkable. But, you know, you can drink sweet tea every day for a thousand days and you'll probably get a kidney stone. So you gotta be careful. Just plain water is the best and it's also very delicious. So I'm a proponent of water and uh, I'm glad I like it. I enjoy liking it. Anyways, I think that's, uh, so that's so that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, the footage, I think, I'm not quite sure what footage I'm going to put with it as of the point of me recording this, but I think the footage from this one's going to be a little bit different. Just uh, kind of just some other footage I had. I always have a bunch of different footage that never quite makes it into other videos. I start a lot of different stuff. Look, I start a million different projects that never quite coalesces into something complete, and uh, something finished, and fully polished, you know, half-baked ideas, so to say. Um, and, but some of them look kind of cool, um, so maybe I'll show some, uh, you know, some footage from that, um, uh, you know, for, for this video. Anyways, thanks for listening, um, and uh, yeah, goodbye everybody. Say... Hi. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye.